What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out why F22 Raptor still reigns supreme. This is by the Infographics Show. I've not watched one of their videos in a long time on this channel, so it's going to be fun. I just like watching videos about the F22, learning more facts about it, learning more intricacies and why it's been changed and why it's been taken out of um, production and all this other stuff. I really enjoy watching these videos. As always, there'll be a link in the description if you want to watch the original video without me waffling over the top of it if that's what you want to do. What else? What else? What else? Uh, don't forget to check out Dreadnought Media. I haven't pushed that in a long time. It's the new channel me and my brother are working on where we uh, see all these bottles over here. Bottles of mead. Me and my brother taste it, review it, try it, make it. All sorts of really cool stuff. Check that out in the description. Other than that, let's shut up. Let's pull this up and let's have a cheeky peek. Let's turn this up. Cruise 200 miles off the Chinese coast. Blast All right, let's move on Two American AWACS planes cruise 200 miles off the Chinese coast, blasting a significant portion of the hostile coastline with radar and feeding that information to American combat assets in the air all across the South China Sea. Okay. For the Chinese, they're a critical target that must be eliminated ASAP. For the Americans who have no ground-based installations to fall back on, they're vital resources to be protected at all costs. Whether the two big birds live or die in the coming moments might just determine who reigns supreme in the skies over China's coastline. Okay. A flight of Chinese J-15 screamed. Is this fictional or is this real? Is this a real? Is this really happened? I'm, I'm guessing it's probably going to tell us if it's fictional or not, isn't it? Toward the American planes armed with long-range missiles, they only need to get within 150 or so miles to down their targets. The Chinese fighters have taken off from military airfields on Hainan Island, hastily repaired after the initial American strike against military bases all across South China's coast by U.S. Navy submarines utilizing Tomahawk cruise missiles. While not fully operational, the airfields this is not are real. able to launch several sorties a day, <laughs> enough to threaten the all-important American AWACS planes. Now, the eight J-15s scream at full afterburner toward their targets. U.S. strikes weren't able to disable all of China's ground-based radar capabilities, and the systems the People's Liberation Air Force still is operational tell the J-15 pilots that the big birds are currently alone. My guess is this is some sort of fictional World War Three type of scenario, isn't it? None of the veteran pilots are fooled, though. The AWACS won't be alone for long. The U.S. Air Force has been operating from airfields in the Philippines, which China has been hesitant to strike at out of fear of driving the Philippines from a passive ally of the U.S. to a fully combat-committed one. <laughs> Somewhere near the AWACS, Chinese long-range radar now picks up a small flight of U.S. Air Force F-15s, likely uh -oh. there to provide cover for the vulnerable... Uh-oh, here come the big fighters. F-15s are coming in. The beasts... But it's going to be the F-22s that save the day, obviously, because this is a video about the F-22s. Planes. The Chinese jets aren't looking for a dogfight. They hope to get within long-range striking distance and down the AWACS long before the F-15s can respond. To accomplish this, the planes first fly east away from their targets, then loop around to the south before turning north on the AWACS 6 o'clock, an unexpected attack vector. The F-15s, which have been expecting an attack from the east, are completely out of position to defend the AWACS, uh. despite being vectored in on the approaching J-15s. The big, slow, and extremely vulnerable American airborne warning and control planes are easy pickings as the Chinese jets cruise toward the firing range. Suddenly, four of the J-15s were... J-15s. I haven't done a video on these yet. I should probably do a video on them, shouldn't I? Learn more about the J-15s. If you've got any recommendations, let me know in the comment section. Receive missile lock warnings. The pilots scan the horizon wildly as their onboard alerting systems work out range and heading. There, 3 o'clock, 30 miles out and closing extremely rapidly, American AIM-120 AMRAMs. The J-15s dump flares and chaff, breaking off their attack <laughs> to outmaneuver the incoming missiles. This, however, means turning away from the incoming missiles and from their current direction of travel, which bleeds large amounts of airspeed, which must very quickly be made up. The other Chinese pilots panic briefly. They know of only one plane that could have remained undetected on radar long enough. The F-22. Oh, I just realized I'm not wearing my work glasses. I'm wearing my casual glasses. I wonder where my work glasses are. Do you like these ones? They're a bit more John Lennon, Harry Potter style, aren't they? <laughs> Here come the F-22s to fuck shit up. <laughs> to ambush them, the American F-22. A hundred miles away, four American F-22 Raptors supercruise at over oh twice the speed God. of sound. Had the J-15s been pointed in their direction, their front-facing radar may have briefly detected the presence of the F-22s by the opening of their weapon bays. Even so, the brief contact may not have even been enough 
to alert the Chinese pilots they were being targeted oh my and gosh. under fire. Given the AIM-120's kill rate of around 30% against actively defending aircraft, each F-22 has launched three missiles at each bird, with a second volley targeting the remaining four J-15s just seconds later. The Chinese formation is in chaos as the second group of J-15s realize they've been targeted as well. The planes dive to put on airspeed as they dump flares and chaff. Most of the American missiles explode harmlessly into the decoys, but- Can you imagine if this actually happened? If the J- 15s actually came up against the F-22s, they would get destroyed, wouldn't they? They would get absolutely hammered. <laughs> Many don't, and six J-15 pilots are forced to eject. The other two break off the attack and decide to cut their losses. The American F-22s have accomplished their mission, but suddenly their powerful long-range radar detect the unmistakable ping of a stealth aircraft opening its weapons bay doors to fire. The F-22's computers immediately recognize the few seconds of the return signal as a Chinese J-20 stealth fighter, Ooh. and the Raptors with their six medium-range missile capacity per plane are completely spent on AIM-120s. China has its own answer to the F-22, largely due to its espionage of American military secrets. Yeah. Head on as they're currently approaching the- The only way they're able to build a great aircraft is by copying Americas. Says a lot, doesn't it? F-22s, the J-20 stealth is less effective than the Americans, but more than good enough to make long-range targeting impossible if not incredibly difficult. Mm. Picking up on the F-22's own firing and thus breach of their stealth capabilities, the J-20s have fired their own long-range missiles in the direction of the last radar contact with the American planes. The missiles cannot hope to lock on to the F-22s at such long range, but once they come within 30 to 20 miles, their onboard radar could pose serious risks to American F-22s. The American pilots face a tough choice. They only have two short-range AIM-9X missiles each, only usable within a few dozen miles of their target. Ooh. Meanwhile, the Chinese missiles are... This is a really good scenario right here. This is really good. Infograph's done a really good, uh, really good little story here, aren't they? Screaming across the sky toward them, turning and running would mean a loss of a lot of airspeed and yeah. potentially allow the missiles to catch up. Plus, while far better than the J-20s, the F-22's rear radar cross-section is far worse than its front and would make them easier targets. The F-22s decide to execute a hard 90-degree turn. Unlike the J-15s, they have the advantage of long-range detection of the hostile J-20's missile launches, and while the maneuver bleeds off precious airspeed, there's plenty of time to regain it. Plus, the incoming missiles can't match the extremely tight turn rate of the F-22 with its thrust vectoring engines and must make a much wider turn, bleeding off its own airspeed. The turn is successful and the Chinese missiles tumble harmlessly out of the sky, Ooh. their airspeed completely exhausted. However, the turn has also presented the F-22's 3 and 9 o'clock to the incoming J-20s, and these are the least stealthy angles of the large American fighter. With plenty of radar reflective surfaces exposed to the long-range radar of the J-20s, there's little the radar-absorbent features of the aircraft's skin can do to prevent a good lock by the Chinese. As the J-20s move in for the kill on the helpless F-22s, the Chinese pilots stare incredulously at a loud, squawking missile lock warning. More American AIM-120s are coming, tearing through the air at 2,500 miles an hour. Holy, 2,500 miles an hour? This story seems like it would be something off um, Top Gear. Top Gun. Sorry, not Top Gear. Top Gun. Do you know what I mean? I want to watch that film again. Top Gun Maverick. Oh my God, what a film. I want to watch that again. I bought that film. I actually have it. So I think I'm going to watch that again soon. Lurking behind the first flight of Raptors, there's a second four-bird flight who have just released on the Chinese planes. With the J-20s moving their forward-facing radar off axis, they never had a chance to detect the second flight of Raptors. The J-20s might be cheap copies of F-22s, but they're still a very stealthy plane, making it hard to get a good weapons lock on them from long range. That's why, while the Chinese and American fighters juked for supremacy, the U.S. Air Force RQ-170 Sentinel drone quietly snuck behind the Chinese <laughs> formation. Now, the unmanned drone activates its radar and blasts the Chinese stealth fighters, hitting the fighters in their least stealthy angles. With its remote data link, the Sentinel sends targeting data back to the second flight of F-22s. There's a lot of hopes here, though, like hopes that there's an unmanned drone in the area, hopes that there's that many F-22s in the sky. That's a big one as well which feed that data directly to their own nine AIM-120 missiles already in flight. 
The American kill network is brutally effective, and China's limited fleet of J-20s is reduced by another four. That'd be Three mental. J-20s remain, however, and the Raptors boost toward the Chinese flight. Neither side has any long-range weapons remaining, but each plane still carries two short-range missiles. At these ranges, the stealth characteristics of both planes are largely ineffective, but the F-22's far greater maneuverability and its superior engines proves dominant, especially with its ability to vector its thrust. The J-20's canards allow it great agility as well, but its inferior engines proves to be its downfall. Two short-range missiles don't guarantee a kill, even in a dogfight, however, which is why the American Raptors have an onboard cannon. The J-20 does not, and within a few minutes one American Raptor has been down, with the total loss of all Chinese J-20s. The clash, just a few dozen miles from the Paracel Islands, has pulled much of the Chinese Air Force's remaining air power into the area. So Imagine if the US and China actually went to war, right? Let me just explain something real quick, right? We have these worldwide superpowers. We have the US, we've got Europe as a whole, you could kind of say. Um, you've got China, you've got Russia to some extent, you've got India now creeping up. Um, if there was a world war, right, firstly, Europe and the US would ally together, right? And let's just pretend that Russia and China ally together, and we don't really know where India falls. They probably would would probably help the West more than anything. But let's just pretend that India, India are not involved. It's just America and Europe versus Russia and China. Um, the only way China would win, Russia couldn't win. The only way China could win is if they did some sort of cyber attack, ruining comms. It's the only way they'd be able to win. And even then, even then, the amount of force from the West is just too great, especially after seeing how, like, how Russia is with Ukraine. Like, Russia is starting to gain, you know, gain ground now in Ukraine, unfortunately. It seems like all the attention has gone to um, Israel and um, Palestine, which rightly so, because that's also devastating. But, like, attention's kind of leaving the whole Ukraine fight now, which is bad. The, I think the West has quite a short attention span when it comes to news. Um, they are gaining ground, but it's taken two years. Do you know what I mean? And the amount of power, firepower that the US has alone, never mind you add Europe on top of that. Europe's got some of the best soldiers in the world. Never mind the technology of the F-35s they've got and the Eurofighter and all that lot. The air, the air power, the sea power, all that lot. But the, so just the man soldiers, the quality is unbelievable. So like, outside of a cyber attack, yeah, you could say nuclear war, but I don't think that would be a thing because China and Russia would just be, that would be like a last hope desperation, wouldn't it? Um, but I just, I don't see any country ever being able to fight against them. And the only way that the US would fall is internally, which... You know, you never know these days with politics, but China wouldn't have a, have a chance, I'm telling you right now. So far, the war has been extremely expensive for both sides in terms of aircraft lost, with hundreds downed on both the Chinese and American side. With the superior technology and capabilities though, the American planes are enjoying a far greater kill ratio, but it's not an easy victory. Super cruising at 65,000 feet above sea level, a third flight of F-22s now closes in on Hainan Island and its remaining military infrastructure. Head on to incoming radar waves from the surviving Chinese radar installations, the F-22s present their stealthiest side. It won't be detectable until within 100 miles or so. Even then, the radar resolution will be so low that the weapons lock won't be achievable until the planes are close to within 30 miles. Oh the F-22s don't need to get that close. Armed with 2,000-pound glide bombs each, the F-22s open their weapons bay door at just under 200 miles and release their payloads. Chinese. It just the 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 incredible incredible technology and design of the F-22, right? And we know the F-35's kind of like iterated on that and, and transformed it a little bit. And it's probably not as good. But you know, it's definitely kind of transformed on it. Imagine what Generation 6 is going to be like. Imagine what Gen 6 is going to be like. Like if this is what Gen 5, what the US is capable of Gen 5 with the F-22, can you imagine? It's going to be mental. Absolutely mental.
Radar immediately picks up the distinct ping of stealth aircraft firing, followed briefly by a large flash as the planes bank and turn away from their targets. But due to their stealthy rear radar cross-sections, the island's air defenses are completely confounded and can't respond. 8,000-pound bombs deploy small fins and begin their satellite-guided flight to their targets. The four remaining air defense radars on the island will receive two bombs each, and in just a few minutes the giant radars are smoldering wrecks. With the loss of this last outer yep. ring of defenses, China has effectively lost the ability to monitor and respond to threats along a large section of the South China Sea, leaving the US and its allies with complete air superiority. For now, the Chinese Air Force will be forced to fight a defensive war close to its own shores, where air defenses remain dense enough to ward off even the stealthy F-22s. At the absolute limits of their combat ranges from airfields in the Philippines, the F-22s rendezvous with one of dozens of American airborne tankers oh my before God. returning. They just keep getting me feel the only, the only time they'd have to stop was to get more weapons. That's the only time they'd need to stop really. To base. With a superior fighter, a larger AWACS and airborne refueling fleet, and the world's most robust battle management and data link capabilities, the US military has won the day, despite the high costs of a war between these two <laughs> military giants. For now, I love that, that, that. <laughs> Go back. Robust battle management Watch. and data link Watch capabilities, this. the US military has won the day, despite the high cost. You want to see th something incredibly American? That's a flag as a person waving a flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days. A war between these two military giants. For now, though, the F-22 continues to reign supreme, unmatched by any other weapon in the sky. Yeah. Want to find out how the mighty Raptor compares to Ooh. the Russian Su-35? Check out this. Ooh, that'll be a good video to watch. I haven't watched any infographic show in so long. The videos are really good and informative. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go check out some of their videos. They are really good. Definitely go check it out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. That was a really fun story. Let's all be honest. We can tell stories all we want, but the US and Europe would absolutely destroy anyone else. We all know it. It's the truth. Other than that, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.